Alan Stein, welcome to CKUT Radio. Thank you very much. You are from Stein and Stein, and you are located in uh, Montreal, and you are representing a woman named Janine Huard. Can you just tell us about that case and when you took it on? Well, I took on her case uh, in the 90s when the uh, government came out with its uh, assistance plan to compensate uh, the former patients of Dr. Cameron who were uh, treated by him between 1950 and 1965 and uh, who were subjected uh, to the uh, massive electric shock, shock treatments that he inflicted upon his former patients as well as the uh, psychic driving uh, treatment that he developed in the latter part of the 50s and early uh, 60s. And she was one of the former patients of Dr. Cameron who was treated by him uh, between 1955. And, uh, and uh, she applied for compensation under this uh, government compensation uh, plan, and her application was denied. And as a result, she uh, came to see me, and we appealed the uh, the denial by the government of her application for compensation, and unfortunately, we were not successful. She originally also was one of the nine patients, former patients of Dr. Cameron, who sued the CIA uh, in the uh, in the nineties, in the early nineties, uh, and uh, as a result of her action, together with the other eight uh, former patients of Dr. Cameron, the CIA settled with each one of them for approximately sixty-six thousand dollars U.S. Uh, 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 representing damages, alleged damages sustained by each one of them. And as a result, I was very much surprised that the government would deny her application for compensation under its uh, uh, compensation uh, or assistance uh, plan because all you had to establish was that you were depatterned as a result of the treatments uh, Dr. Cameron uh, gave to each one of the uh, patients and that you were put in a childlike state. And this woman not only was subjected to massive electric shock treatments and experimental drugs, but also was subjected to the psychic driving uh, treatment of Dr. Uh, Cameron, which he developed in the late 50s and, and early uh, 60s. Can you tell us why she originally went into the Institute? She was suffering po uh, from post postpartum uh, depression, and that was the original reason why she went into it, and she was diagnosed, uh, I believe, as a, uh, um, a schizophrenic. Uh, by Dr. Cameron. And she was in and out of the uh, Allen Memorial uh, over a period of uh, many years. She just didn't have one uh, period of ad admission and treatment. Now, you stated before that the CIA admitted that they had done these experiments and they actually made a payment to her. Uh, to her and to the other eight former patients of Dr. Cameron, uh, 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 some of whom I represented as well. Uh, not in regard to the action against the CIA, but in regard to their application for compensation. Uh, an uh, one of the patients, it's known, was uh, uh, Louis, Louis Weinstein, who uh, was also uh, one of the patients of Dr. Cameron, who was uh, treated by him as well as, a, uh, as, as we say, as a guinea pig. And uh, he sued the CIA and uh, applied for compensation and also sued the Allen Memorial, and we were able to settle. Uh, the CIA settled with him as well, and I was able to settle his uh, Royal Victoria Hospital, and also uh, he was compensated by the government under its uh, assistance uh, uh, plan. So when you settled with Allen Memorial, is that a, a direct settlement with McGill University? Uh, well, direct settlement with, well, at, at that time it was the Royal Victoria Hospital. I don't believe it was part of McGill University, although it was associated with McGill University. But yes, it was uh, the Royal Victoria Hospital, because the Allen Memorial was a uh, division of the Royal Victoria Hospital. Is that the only settlement now from that institution? I believe so. I think that was the only case that was... Uh, no, there was another case that was settled as well, I'm sorry, where I acted for uh, for one of the uh, former patients, and we were able to settle that case as well. And he also applied for compensation under the government assistance plan, and he was compensated. 
Can you tell us uh, what is the government's uh, response to the the, lo the current lawsuit? I know that, that uh, you're seeking a status of a class action lawsuit. Um, As well. Well, let me give you a bit of the background. The reason I took an action on behalf of Janine Huard uh, against the government of Canada is because I also acted for a former patient of Dr. Cameron, Gail Kastner. And uh, she also was a former patient of Dr. Cameron and treated by him between 1950 and 1965. And uh, she applied for compensation under the uh, government assistance plan. And her application as well was denied, and we appealed her, uh, the denial of her application, and I was unsuccessful again in obtaining compensation for her. So uh, we sued the uh, Allen. We sued the Royal Victoria Hospital and the government cat in the Superior Court uh, for over a million dollars, and unfortunately, the uh, action was dismissed on that it had been prescribed. We appealed and we lost in appeal uh, on the basis of prescription. The Court of Appeal said it's a matter of fact, and therefore, it did not uh, want to intervene in the finding of fact by the uh, trial judge. So then we went to the uh, federal court. We sued in the federal court saying that, well, at least she's entitled to be compensated. And we were successful in winning the action for Gail Kastner in the uh, uh, federal uh, court on the basis that the government rejecting Gail uh, Kastner's application for compensation misapplied the order and counsel or decree. Uh, in effect, the uh, court held, and it was Mr. Justice Baldry, that the... Uh, the uh, the uh, people who were charged, the managers of this plan, who were charged with the implementation of the uh, government assistance plan, misapplied the uh, order and counsel decree. In effect, what they did was they said uh, they concluded in rejecting many of the applications that you had to be totally de a deep pattern, whereas the decree provided for either totally or substantially deep pattern. And in the case of Gail Kastner, the Mr. Justice Baudry said there was no question that she was at least substantially depatterned, even though, unlike uh, uh, Madame Huard, she had not uh, been uh, subjected to uh, psychic driving. She had only been subjected, uh, subjected to massive electric shock treatments and experimental drugs. So... As a result of that case, I, I felt that there was a uh, possibility that Madame Huard could sue and also be certified, uh, sue in, in the federal court and also be certified to represent, I believe, over 200 other former patients of Dr. Cameron who had, whose applications had been denied. So that's what, that's the circumstances which gave rise to the action against the federal government on behalf of Madame uh, Jeanine Huard. Now, of course, the government, the response of the government was that, well, you're much too late. It's over 12 years since her application uh, was denied, and therefore uh, you, you don't have a recourse anymore on behalf of Madame, uh, Madame uh, Huard. And I, I want to say that we had a lengthy hearing before the uh, Honorable Mr. Justice Luke Martineau, and uh, the Judge Martineau in a, I believe, 42-page judgment concluded that we were within the legal delay, that, in, that delay, and that's what he did. He granted an extension of the delay, saying that uh, Madame Huard's claim is certainly... Uh, uh, it certainly warrants a hearing by the uh, court. It's an arguable uh, 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 claim, and therefore he extended the uh, delay. Uh, and he even actually went uh, indirectly into the merits of the case, and he certainly will, uh, in his judgment, gave the impression that uh, uh, if he heard the merits of the case, and unfortunately he won't hear the merits of the case, that he would grant her application for judicial review and order the government to compensate her. Uh, the government has appealed that judgment, and we're presently before the Federal Court of Appeal. And the government is taking the position, well, this sets a, a very dangerous precedent, because uh, now anyone can come back uh, to uh, the Federal Court and ask for a judicial review, even if it's beyond the 30 days, uh, based upon the judgment rendered by Mr. Justice uh, Martineau. I don't agree with that position. Uh, uh, Madame Huard's case is a very exceptional case, and, uh, and Judge Martineau said that in his judgment. It's a very exceptional case, and that's why he's extending the uh, delay. 
In the meantime, we are presently negotiating with the government to settle, and there's a possibility that if we do settle, that they will review all the other applications that were denied, which uh, would certainly be a uh, uh, will certainly be a wonderful result as a result of the uh, proceedings instituted uh, by Madame Yuard. Because many of the subjects were, um, I know that there was memory loss, a lot of memory loss involved, and well, so that, yeah, that's why the 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 uh, order and council, or the government, uh, as which provided for the government assistance plan, said that you had to be in, uh, you had to be depatterned either totally or substantially, and put in a childlike state. And in effect, what they meant is that you had to uh, sustain a, 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 a serious and severe memory loss. No, and I'm, that's what happened to, I'd say, practically every one of the patients who were treated as guinea pigs by uh, Dr. Cameron. They had uh, they had no memory of their childhood at all. And this certainly was the case of Madame Huard and the case of uh, Gail Kastner. One of the objectives, and it was, this was found on documents uh, later on, was in a list of aims regarding the MK Ultra experiment. And one of the one of the aims was to lower the ambition and general working efficiency of, of men when administered in undetectable amounts. Can you just give us an idea of Ms. Huard's uh, state as, as it is now or what ha how, as it has been over, say, the past, since the experiment and over the past 30 years? Is she able to work in a normal environment? Is she able to communicate with, with people normally? Well, now, Madame Huard, as you know, is, I believe, 78 or 79 years old. So she's not in a position to work. But after she, uh, she uh, was treated by Dr. Cameron uh, in the 60s, uh, she came back to, uh, uh, to live at home with her husband and children, and she was unable to look after her children. She had to call uh, upon her mother to come and live with her, and this lasted for a period of uh, 10 years where she could not cope with life, could not cope with bringing up a family or being a mother or wife. A mother to her children and a wife to her husband. So it certainly is, so she certainly sustained severe uh, and irreparable damage uh, during that period as a result of the uh, uh, treatments uh, of uh, Dr. Cameron uh, inflicted upon her. Uh, after that, uh, she slow, slowly recovered, but I don't believe that she ever recovered her full memory of her childhood and so on. It left certainly a permanent uh, loss of memory of her uh, childhood or a good part of her childhood, the, uh, the treatments that she received from uh, Dr. Cameron. Now, do you believe the settlement is going to be fair and just? Uh, no, I don't believe $100,000 is fair and just, but that's what the government provided for, and uh, uh, we, have, uh, we don't have any other alternative. It's too late to sue the uh, Royal Victoria Hospital or McGill University Learning Center, uh, 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 Health, uh, McGill University Health and Learning Center, of which the Royal Victoria Hospital now forms part thereof, because the court would take the same position that it took in the case of Gail Castor. Her action is clearly prescribed. So she'll, she'll have to be satisfied with the $100,000. Have you had other people come to you and, and want to um, take action against the government as well? Yes, I've had, I've had many, many telephone calls, communication, emails, uh, correspondence from many other uh, former patients of Dr. Kamen or their families either their spouses or their children, and so on. Unfortunately, many of the uh, former patients of Dr. Cameron who were treated by him between 1950 and 65 and who applied for the compensation of $100,000 have now passed away. And uh, this will become an issue with us when we settle with the government, whether or not they should compensate the uh, families of the uh, former patients. Uh, the government has taken the position uh, that at the time that they provided for the uh, compensation, uh, that it did not include patients who had deceased, who were deceased. So I don't know if the government would agree to uh, extend the compensation to the families of the uh, former uh, patients who have who applied at the time in the 90s, but who have since uh, passed away. But there are other patients who uh, have communicated with me are their uh, uh, families, and they certainly will benefit from any settlement that I'm able to uh, conclude with the uh, government. Now, when is the next date where you're going to find out whether this is going to go through? 
Well, we're in the process of negotiating uh, with the government. I don't know when it will be uh, uh, finalized. It's hard to say. You know, when you're dealing with the government, everything goes very slowly. And uh, meanwhile, the government is... uh, proceeding with its uh, appeal. It it will be filing its uh, joint record, and uh, I anticipate that the case probably would be heard, the, probably be heard uh, by the end of the, uh, this year. But uh, hopefully we'll be able to conclude a settlement before the appeal is heard, even if we, even if we still have to proceed on the appeal. Okay, I've been speaking with Alan Stein. He's from the law firm of Stein & Stein in Montreal. I thank you for joining me uh, this morning, and I hope that you will uh, hear back from the government very soon. Thank you very much. Okay, have a nice day.